Hey everybody, it's Andy, it's the After Show with Phil Donahue and Marlo Thomas. The book is called What Makes a Marriage Last? 40 celebrated couples share with us the secrets to a happy life available now. Is there one main lesson that you two have learned either in your own marriage or through talking to these 40 couples, like the one thing that seems to be the commonality in making uh, relationships last? I think it's that you really want it to last. These couples that have all been married from 70 years to 18 years, and, and, the, and the one theme is they wanted it to last. They went to marriage counseling. They went to retreats. They go on, on holiday alone together. They found ways to stay connected. That, that kind of surprised us, that, that yeah, real yeah. stick to for the for the marriage. And Kira Sedgwick said it really beautifully in just one line. She said, when you get married, there's no plan B. And when wow. you have that feeling, no matter all the challenges that happen in life and in marriage, um, if none of these couples were looking for the escape route, they were looking forward together. And that really w- was impressive. And we didn't realize that when we went out. You know, we, we interviewed every couple, just the two of us, with a little tape recorder in person, every single couple. So it was just two of us talking to another husband and wife. It was very intimate and personal, and that's why the stories are so rich. Marlo, Tom B. wants to know if it's true you turned down the lead role in Rosemary's Baby. And I do you did. Re- you did? So stupid. Well, I didn't read, uh, I read the book, uh, and the guy who was producing it, Bill Castle, had made all horror movies. Okay. And he said it to me, and I thought, oh, God, you know, she gets impregnated by the devil. And I, I just, it felt ridiculous. I didn't know that Roman Polanski was going to direct it and it was going to turn into this big hit, but yep, I, I turned it down from the book. Oh my gosh. Phil, I remember um, your interviews when Mommy Dearest came out. You had Christina Crawford on your show. You had her on a few times, I feel like. What was your... You also had uh, Betty Davis's daughter on your show after her book came out. And I remember you had Betty Davis on your show several times. And she was always incredible on the Donahue show. What, what was your take of... of Christ, I went on a little tangent there. But what was your take on um, Christina Crawford when she came on? Well, she, uh, she was really... Uh... A, a huge object of curiosity. Um, and she was very honest about uh, her own behavior and uh, how her how her husband and her family responded to it. And I think she opened the door for a lot of other people to say what they really meant rather than do the Chamber of Commerce speech. Yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. Up, until that, up until that time, I mean, I grew up in Hollywood, so I know that up until that time, everything was so glossed over. You know, everything was in the closet, everything, no matter what. Your sexual preference, who you were in love with, what you were like as a person. You know, nobody knew anything about any, anything real. Everything right. was a photo. Up. Right. Well, Marlo, by the way, when you were growing up, had you heard about what was going on in the Crawford House? Was that stuff that people whispered about? In, in... No. no. No, I didn't know about that. Uh-uh. No. Uh, Marlo, Heather, I wants to know what you think about the new show, Mrs. America. You were, you were on the ground fighting for ERA at the time. Did you watch it? I watched uh, the first two, uh, and I saw somebody was playing Phil. I've never seen that before. Um, uh, I, I, it was okay. I, you know, I was not a fan, obviously, of Phyllis Shafley. And, yeah. and Blanchett is such a wonderful actress that she made her warmer and kinder. She was which, not warm or kind. Phyllis which Schlafly. was annoying, I'm sure. Phil, you ha- I'm sure you had Phyllis Schlafly <laughs> on your show. What, would, what was the key for you of having people on your show who you just, you were, I mean, you're, 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 a very, you're a huge feminist. So when you have someone like her on your show, how did you approach that? <laughs> Well, that's what my wife wanted to know. Right. Uh, you know, I, I featured Phyllis Schlafly you also, at, at a time when uh, the, the, the ERA. The, the week of the vote. Right. I, 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 I was in New York, and he was in Chicago, and I called him 
Bella Abza called and said, do you know that Phil has Phyllis Shafley on the week of the vote in Illinois? And we really needed Illinois for the ERA. We had Illinois, Georgia, and Florida. We needed just one of them. So I called him up and I said, how could you put Phyllis Shafley on the week of the vote in Illinois? And he said, if you don't know why I have to put Phyllis Shafley on the week of the vote in Illinois, then you don't know what I do. Ooh. And wow. And it was a great lesson for me and good for us to know, you know, that I, he was doing a show about news. He was not, he was not doing, you know, a, a show with a band and a piano and all that. He was every week. He had one guest and he would do Nelson Mandela and Daniel Ortega and Muhammad Ali and Phyllis Shafley and all right. these people. So he, he was doing, he was a journalist and I, that really taught me a lesson and it was a wonderful lesson to learn. It gave me such respect for him. And it also saved me from everybody who called me and wanted to be on his show. I thought, you know what? I don't book his show. <laughs> Tell me the story about your dad. Yeah, sure. Um, I was about to feature um, Katie Kelly. Katie Kelly, uh, who had written this book about Sinatra. Yes. And I remember saying on the air, I said, if all this is true, then Frank Sinatra is mentally ill. I, I said that on the air. But what I didn't know is before the show, Frank Sinatra called her father. My father. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's right. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, said, hey, you know, uh, Danny, uh, your son-in-law is blah, blah, blah. And Danny did not flinch. He never called me, never said a word. I mean, I was so... And they, were, and they were best friends, Frank Sinatra. We lived next door. Yeah, they lived next door to us in Palm Springs when we were children. And in fact, my father was Frankie Jr.'s godfather. So wow. the families were very close. So for Frank to call my father and say, you know, you got to get your son-in-law not to, you know, can't interview Katie Kelly, who's written this horrible book on me. And my dad never mentioned it to us until after the show was done. And then he, he didn't me. move. He never called me. Uh, he did say, oh, Frank, he doesn't book the show. All, <laughs> you know, all the producers do that. He doesn't. That's the most he did, <laughs> you know, uh, at least to cover me in this uh, tragedy. Wow. But I will never, ever yeah. r forget his support yeah. of my freedom to book the show without... He'd have done pressure. it anyway, that's for sure. You put on Phyllis Shaffley, you put on Frank Sinatra. Yeah, right. Phil, who was your, who was your <laughs> favorite um, president or first lady to have on the show? I liked um, Nancy Reagan. Uh-huh. Uh, she was a, a, a real good kid. Um, I remember when I went into the green room, I said, I a gorgeous... And she said, oh, and I remember how bashful she was. Or, and I don't think she was putting on airs. Uh -huh. she was, you know, she was sincerely saying, oh, I'm not gorgeous. You know, I she mean, was, was a little scared, you said, too. She was a little She was nervous, yeah. uh, you know. <laughs> uh, but somehow we both survived the hour. Um, and she was a good guest, very good guest. Wow. Do you miss it ever, Phil? Oh, sure. I mean, you can't do set. How many did I do? 4,000? 6,000 6, shows. Wow. 27 years. 29 uh, years. Uh, 29 years. <laughs> <laughs> you. Ask like, me anything. This is like that, that song about, not my you getting old, not you, you know. Yeah. You, I was wearing blue, yeah. no, I was wearing green. Right, 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 right. <laughs> that, yeah. And wow. Wow. Um, um, go ahead. So you do miss it. Well, that, that makes sense. Marlo, before I wrap out, I just have to ask, uh, talk to me about the experience of being awarded the, the Presidential Medal of Freedom from President Obama. What was uh, that day like for you? It, it was amazing. It was out of this world. You know, when you're, well, who you are and who we are, there are certain things you aspire to in your life, you know. Someday, maybe I'll have a successful show. Maybe someday I'll win an Emmy or a Tony or an Oscar or something. 
Those are the things you think of in your life. You don't grow up thinking maybe someday I'll, I'll win the Presidential Medal of Freedom. It's so out of your mind that when Valerie Jarrett called me to say that the president wanted to award me this medal, I was flabbergasted. Wow. And, the, and the day I went and the day it happened, the thing I thought of were my grandparents. Mm -hmm. My grandparents came from Lebanon as immigrants with nothing. They had their, their belongings in cloth sacks. And I didn't know I was going to think of them. And it makes me cry to think mm. of it again. But I was standing there. And as President Obama was putting the medal around me, I thought, my God, in just two generations, wow. wouldn't my grandparents be flabbergasted that their granddaughter, you know, they came in cloth sacks and their granddaughter's having a medal put around her neck by the president of the United States. It really got to me, got to me so, so strongly. That's great. All right, I'm gonna leave it there. I'm also gonna thank you, Phil, for all of the years and years of advocacy you did for the gay community on your show. That was, as a gay kid in St. Louis, growing up watching it, it meant the world to me and I'm sure millions of other people. It was a really, really big deal what you did. So thank you both. The book is called What Makes a Marriage Last? 40 Celebrated Couples Share With Us the Secrets to a Happy Life. It's available now. If you're looking for a great charity, please give to St. Jude's. Thank excellent, you. excellent work by Marlo for her life with her family. For more, click around bravotv.com.